Let's up the tempo! What is up everyone, my name is Flaky Biswick of Team Monumental and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about Thermal Expansion in order to get started in Fission Warfare. So Thermal Expansion is a mod created by Team CoFH, which adds new ores, machines, and most importantly, power generation and energy into your game. Now, the mod I will refer to as Thermal Expansion is actually split up into three mods. Thermal Dynamics, which adds pipes and cables, Thermal Foundation, which adds ores and metals, and of course, Thermal Expansion, which adds generators and machines. The decision to make our mod require Thermal Expansion, and more specifically, the energy produced by the generators in the mod, called RF, or Redstone Flux, came after multiple suggestions by the community to implement RF compatibility into our previous mod, Fusion Warfare. Thermal expansion is core to many mod packs already, so you won't have to go out of your way to download it. Now, another great mod, which is not required but recommended, is Not Enough Items, as it lets you view the recipes for all the items in our mod. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you will notice after playing with Thermal Expansion installed are the many ores generated within the world, as you can see here. These ores produce key resources needed in order to craft the machines and power. If you're interested in knowing how to make the many machines I am about to show you, simply hover over the item and hit R with any I installed. Alright, so the first thing we're going to go over is how to make one of the key ingredients in many of the recipes in Fission Warfare, which is steel. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is set up some power. Now, to set up power with thermal expansion, you need a generator, like this steam dynamo, and something to hold the energy you generate, like this leadstone energy cell. So first, I'm going to place down the energy cell, and I'm going to place down the dynamo, which will then attach to it. And the dynamo requires water and some coal to make energy. So put in the coal, and then just right-click the dynamo with a water bucket, of course, I'm in creative, but you could do this with survival by just getting more water from an endless supply. And as you can see, energy is coming from the steam dynamo, which is generating steam, and going into the energy cell. Now, over here, uh, there's a tab called configuration. If you open it up, you can click on the sides of the block and change the colors. Orange is output, blue is input. So if we want to output the right side, we'll change it to orange, and place down some flux ducts, which are cables that transfer power. Now we're going to want to transfer this power into a induction smelter, because if you look, the way to make steel was with an induction smelter, iron and pulverized charcoal or coal. Um, however, first we have to get pulverized coal. So the way to do that is place down a pulverizer, we'll connect it to our line of energy, and as you can see the RF is going into each machine, and whenever there's excess it will be stored in the energy cell, so we won't waste any. So the first thing we'll do is put in some coal in this pulverizer, we're going to need two, and it will begin to pulverize the coal. Alright, so we got our two pulverized coal, and now we're going to put it in the induction smelter with an iron ingot, and it will begin to make steel. Alright, we got our steel, and if we just stick it straight back into the induction smelter, we can make a steel plate, which comes out much faster, which is also used if I hit U on it in many recipes in Fission Warfare. Alright, so that's how you make steel and set up power. Alright, so you will also notice that there are many blocks within Fission Warfare, like the Missile Factory and the Turret, which also need power from RF. So, as in the last section, you'll simply place it down, hooked up to a wire, which is getting power. I also replaced the steam dynamos with magmatic dynamos, which use lava, and there we go. This is beginning to charge with RF. It holds a maximum of 200,000, which is quite a lot but you don't need all of it to create a missile. Now next there are other things which need power which you actually hold and equip like the compressor. If I right click the compressor it puts it on my back and this is needed for the nail gun which reinforces the concrete. So if I want to charge this I place down an energetic infuser which again you can hit R to tell you how to make it. And then you will simply fill it up with RF and place the compressor inside the charging slot. Alright, the compressor is now fully charged, I can take it out, go into game mode S, and put it on my back, like this. Then with a nail gun and a nail gun magazine, I can begin to reinforce the concrete. Now these are just some of the many implications that Thermal Expansion has with our mod, Fission Warfare. 
And if you'd like to know more about thermal expansion, I highly recommend you watch some tutorials or try it out for yourself, because it is a great mod. Now there will be many more tutorials coming in the future, so I hope you stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.